Self-hosting your own family tree or your genealogy is great because you maintain the privacy of it and you can still have all the information interactivity that you want. Gramps Web is the best, most modern tool that I used. So I do want to promote it and show you how to get set up with Gramps Web real quick using Docker. And then I'll show you how to create, get started with your family tree. So I just Googled the uh, family tree of the British royal family because I figured this would be the most well-documented family tree. We'll just do maybe like, you know, a few people in here, a couple generations. So don't need to go too crazy with getting this set up. You do want to just do a Google search for Gramps Web, and then you can go to their website here. Go to install setup and deploy with Docker. They're going to have a compose file right here. I'm going to go ahead and just open that up in a new tab. And this just has a text file for you to get going. And so pretty easy to get started. Let's go ahead and just select all of this, copy that. Okay, and then in your own server um, where you keep your Docker Compose files, I have my Docker folder here and then a folder for each of my applications. I'm just gonna go ahead and create another folder for Gramps. And then let's go ahead and create a Docker Compose dot yaml if i can spell that and then let's just paste that in here now i will just go ahead and change these things yeah i'm just going to make all of these bind mounts instead of using docker volumes i'm going to change these to be bind mounts so basically just put a dot forward slash and that just means that this is going to create folders here within my gramps folder. I tend to prefer bind mounts over Docker volumes, so I'm just going to comment those out. The only other thing is the port mapping, so I don't believe I have 5,000 being used, so I want to switch that to 5,000. Keep in mind that the um, web API must be served over HTTPS. If you don't know how to do that, check out my Nginx proxy manager tutorial or any of my reverse proxy tutorials. You can use swag. Um, I'm also going to create a local DNS entry for me to access Gramps web. So let's go ahead and create a reverse proxy host here for Gramps. So I'll call this gramps.thomaswildtech.com. And then I am going to go to my port 5000 here on my local host because I'm running Nginx proxy manager in host mode. Don't believe I really need WebSocket support or any of these other items, but uh, it didn't really hurt to uh, add WebSocket support. SSL, we're going to select our wildcard certificate for Thomas Wild Tech, and then we're going to force SSL. Going to add HTTP2 support, and then uh, that's pretty much it. I will go ahead and create a DNS entry inside of my own hosted AdGuard home. If you're hosting this over the public web, you don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna be doing this on my local network. So that's why I'm using a local DNS server. So if you, you can use, you know, just a Cloudflare tunnel if you want. In fact, let's just do a Cloudflare tunnel because I don't wanna confuse anyone with hosting a, a local DNS if that is confusing to you. So for public access, which I'm sure is probably what you want, Cloudflare Tunnel is a great way to give public access to your Genealogy Gramps website. And you would just go to the Zero Trust portal and then the tunnels. And then if you don't know how to set up a tunnel, watch my tutorial, link in the description. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and add a published route. We'll call this Gramps. I'll choose Thomas Wild Tech. I will just route this to my Nginx proxy manager. And so that is going to be on my local IP at port 443. Change that to Gramps. And then under additional application settings. Now, you know, if you don't have your own reverse proxy, you can just route this to the um, IP in the binded port, which would be 5000. I generally like to go through my own reverse proxy so that I get those logs. So let's go to Gramps 
dot Thomas Wild Tech dot com for the origin server name and also for the host header. Let's go ahead and add gramps at Thomas Wild Tech dot com. So we've saved that. That is now publicly accessible going to my reverse proxy. Oh, and I did change, I did make that gramp. So let's change that to gramps thomaswildtech.com. Okay, and then I shouldn't have to change the SSL certificate because it is just using the wildcard. So that should be fine. Go ahead and save that. Now let's see if we can access this. Oh, I need to actually take it up first. So CD over to Gramps, and then let's do a Docker compose up dash D. And I did not save my file, so make sure I save that and run again. Okay, Gramps web should be up and running. I can access it directly through port 5000 or using my Cloudflare tunnel. So let's go ahead and just try using our Cloudflare tunnel. Go to gramps.tomswalltech.com. And boom, our Cloudflare tunnel is working. We're going to create an admin account and we can put in SMTP settings that we can get if we use something like Amazon Simple Email Services. But let's just go and create an account so I can show you how to use Gramps. So username Thomas, Thomas Wild Tech, Thomas Wild. And then let's go ahead and create this. I should be able to change these later. If not, then I'll just redo it. But yeah, I should be able to change that later. Hit submit and then hit start. Okay, so we are in the Gramps web application. Let us go ahead and start with a new person. So the way that this works is pretty much everything is stored in these lists. These are basically like database lookup tables that you can just add entries to new people, new families, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and add a new person. Let's see if I can do a split screen here. Okay, and we'll just start with Charles here. Okay, and I guess I am a little confused as to the naming convention of the royal family, but I th believe that basically these are all the given names. Um, I like to do first name, middle name as the given name, and then the surname, I'm going to use his house name, which is House Windsor. Gender, male, birthday. It's kind of cool because you can have like a regular date or you can also have like an estimated. So if you don't really know when someone's divorce took place, you can kind of just put in like a year and like, you know, January 1st or whatever. And that's that's pretty, pretty fine. So same with the type before, after, about. So we're going to choose regular. Birthday was 1948. Month is November. Day is 14th for the birthplace. If you want to add like a city, uh, you'd have to do that bef you, like separate. So I'll show you how to do that in the, the tables area. Same with the uh, death place. Death date, there's nothing there. And we're going to go ahead and add him. So we are creating him. That's our first person right there. So if we go to family tree and we want to set him as the home person, we can go ahead and do that. And then that way he's kind of like the home person um, and then go to family tree. And now we have Prince Charles right there. Now, if we want to get a picture, we can do that. Save image. I'll just say, yeah, I guess we'll see if this this web type works for the image. I think it will. So go to list and then people and then go ahead and hit edit and what we can do is go to gallery and then we can upload a file okay and then that looks good we're going to hit save so it'll save that to the person let's go ahead and so it does a it does a pretty good job of uh, facial detection so it kind of already circles around his his head right there so now that's going to be associated with him. Let's go ahead and create a, another person and we'll do Princess Diana. So let's go ahead and do Diana Spencer. And so for like a maiden name, what you can do is you can add, you know, whatever the current surname is. And then you can come down here and just add uh, an additional surname for a maiden name. 
So given name, we're just going to use um, Spencer because I think she kept kept it obviously. Female. Okay, let's go ahead and look at her information. So she was born in 1961, July 1st. And then let's go ahead and add her. So we have her there. Let's go ahead and get her picture. Let's go edit and then go to the gallery and upload her picture. Save that. Okay, and then um, just to kind of complete one family, let's go ahead and add uh, Prince William. Okay, but there is no family tree uh, association because we don't have a family yet. So what we can do is I like to, the family is a father and mother and uh, their children. So you, you will have multiple families in your family tree, of course. So we're going to go ahead and create one family here, and we're going to select Prince William as the father, and then the mother is going to be Princess Diana. And then children, we're going to select all of the children that we have created. Of course, I only created one, but we, we can add more people later if we create Prince Harry in here. So the... Uh, Marriage type would be unmarried because they got divorced. So they are unmarried, even though we can still have a wedding date in there. Okay, so relation type unmarried. You can come in here and hit edit, and we can still put a wedding event in here. So in this case, they were married in 1981. We don't have that exact date from Wikipedia. So. Come in here and search for marriage. And then we can say estimated about, you know, something like that. Go 1981. And then I'll just say 1-1 one, one because I just don't know. And hit save there for the marriage of the family. You can also put the divorce date in there. So you can see that they tied the knot. That's kind of what that means. Okay, and then the, the divorce was 1996. So come in here, add another event. Look for divorce. And again, this is going to be estimated 1996. I'll just choose 1-1 one, one again. Okay, and then we, so we can see that they were married. They tied the knot. Little uh, chain there. And then the chain broke. <clears throat> estimated 1996. Okay, so now we can kind of see what's happening with that family. Princess Diana, of course, tragically died. And so we can add an event for that. So come in here, go to events and go to death. And she died 1997, August 31st. Okay, so then that kind of updates her birth and death date right there. So if we go to our family tree now, oh, and I accidentally set the dad here to Prince William, which is not the father. So that should have been Prince Charles. So Charles, Diana, and then William is the son. So let's exit out. Now, if we look at our relationship graph here, we can see that we have Prince Charles, Di Princess Diana, and their son, William. And um, this formats a beautiful family tree. So uh, again, Gramps Web is awesome. This is basically how you do most of the operations in Gramps Web. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like and subscribe button and come back to see more tutorials. Look forward to it. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye.